This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. This is a City Council regular meeting for the City of Warrenville for Monday, April 6, 2020. I want to remind you that this meeting will be entirely via electronic means and not at City Hall. Could I have please a call to order? Please note this meeting is being recorded yet again. I have to say that a couple of times to make sure nobody uh, didn't hear or someone didn't hear it. So our, may I have a roll call, please? Alderman Ashour. Here. Alderman Berry. Here. Alderman Vivier. Here. Alderman Davalos. Here. Alderman Krishal. Here. Alderman Widener. Here. Alderman Wilson. Here. Thank you, Emily. We'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. I would ask you to say it silently by yourself as I say it out loud. I pledge allegiance to the flag for the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Excuse me, did anybody note that Alderman Goodman is excused? Uh, no. We need to note that Alderman Goodman is excused for this evening. Thank you, John. We'll move on to the public hearing for the FY 2021 budget. Uh, before we have the motion, a, a reminder that anyone from the public that wishes to speak during that hearing, please announce yourself with your name and address. Please speak slowly and clearly so we can capture your information. And once we have everyone wishing to speak, I will call on you one by one to proceed with your comments. So with that, may I have a motion to go into public hearing? So moved, Alderman, Dab Alderman Widener. Second, Second by Alderman, Alderman Davalos. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, and we do, we're do. we gonna do a roll call for every vote, right? And Emily? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Alderman Krishal? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Alderman Devere? Aye. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Thank you again, uh, Emily. So we are now in public hearing for the 2021 budget. Um, Finance Director Dahlstrand, would you like to lead us off? Anything that you want to add for this evening before this discussion? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight on item 7A will be the first reading of the 2021 budget ordinance. It is the same figures as was presented at the March 14th City Council budget workshop. Staff working did, did diligently to assess uh, wh wh whatever we can out of the current environment um, of the COVID-19 effects that we'll have on city revenues. It will be a substantial impact on those revenues. Uh, we have not yet determined exactly what that will be. Um, I can say that at this point that it will likely be well in excess of $1.4 million across all funds. Those projections are still in the works as the tar target keeps moving. Uh, so they are not incorporated into this first uh, reading of the ordinance you have tonight. And, uh, any, any, um, uh, any determinations we are able to make between now and the final reading the ordinance on April 20th will be incorporated into the budget along with any other proposed changes that the City Council authorizes and directs us to make. Okay, um, City Administrator Copley, anything to add? Uh, nothing in terms of numbers, however. Uh, <laughs> I would note later in the budget, when there's actually the first reading, there's some notations just about uh, what's included in the agenda backup regarding to the, regarding the budget, uh, the efforts that staff has made to reassess some of the things for next year to look at delaying some of the large expenditures and all. But I will ask when the council gets to actually adopting the budget ordinance on 
April 20th, that you do so with most of the proposed budget intact with the direction to staff to assess the fiscal situation and make reductions as necessary once the fiscal year starts. And we'll be communicating all those with the council. Uh, this is related to the public hearing, really related to the first and second readings of the budget ordinance. So essentially what you're saying is the budget as we have put it together thus far is a bit of a placeholder until we can figure out exactly where we need to be. Correct. Okay. All right, I will give uh, every alderman the opportunity to ask a question or make a comment. This will be the way we do it throughout the rest of the meeting. So we'll start with Alderman Ashour. The, uh, just obviously concerned about the level of revenue coming in, the fact that the state is in pretty dire straits, and I would guess that our payments from them are going to be at the very least delayed. Um, they're going to be looking to figure out ways to get some of the money that we have been used to getting. Um, they Obviously, our hotel motel is not what it was. The uh, beverage and food tax, the entertainment tax, that's all been dramatically affected, probably with sales tax figures also. So um, I think it's a very cautious time. Thank you. Alderman Barry? Uh, no comment. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Bevere? I'll uh, kind of echo the same thing from Alderman Ash Hour, and it's uh, tough times right now, and uh, that's all I have to say about it. Okay, thank you. Alderman Davalos? Uh, yes, I just have two two questions. Um, any way to get some of these numbers that you're working on before April 20th, just to take a look at them, or even if we need to pick them up or have them delivered from City Hall? So that we don't see them for the first time on April 20th. Is yeah, that known? Uh, Alderman, or not Alderman, uh, um, Finance Director. Finance Director Dahlstrand. Yeah, thank you. I, I don't want to be an Alderman. Um, we are working. We are working to so some of those. It will certainly be our goal to have those to you uh, long before the 20th. And I'm pretty sure that even whatever number we present present to you will be our best um our best estimate of where we we, we will be because obviously we have no way of knowing exactly where we will be so yes we will have those to you before you consider the fi final ordinance for adoption thank you and it's perfectly legitimate through this next budget year to make changes as we go uh, in the city council i mean with with staff uh, as we see how this unfolds that that's a legitimate budget process, right? That you can come in and make adjustments, amendments? Absolutely. Okay. My second question is, um, I, I was very impressed by later on in this, in this meeting and later on in the agenda, uh, some of the suggestions that were made to take a look at this. Um, but as these, as staff decides, or at least puts their their opinion on which of these alternatives might be good. It'll still be up to a city council to vote on how we are going to maybe take a look at what Alderman Ashow and Alderman Beer and, and Kevin, your estimates of our shortages will be. I mean, it'll still end up being a council. We'll at least discuss it at council, right? Correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Alderman Krishal. Um, yeah, one, well, two things, I guess. Um, one, to reiterate what Alderman Ashauer had mentioned regarding the reduction or the delay, I guess, from the state remission of those taxes to the municipalities. I, I mean, that's going to be a, a concern going forward since we don't know when that's going to happen. And the second thing is I think that those those numbers are actually going to be lower anyways, right? So it's not just a delay in how, the timing, but it's also going to be a reduction in the actual you know, uh, tax money. So, um, you know, I, obviously we're not going to have those numbers before we need to to vote on on approving the budget. So, I guess the only thing we can do is is you know, um, math and projections, right? I mean, since more than likely the the stay at home order is going to be extended, um, you know, at least till past when this uh, when this budget needs to be approved. So, that, those are my concerns. Thank you. Alderman Widener. Yeah, I agree with Eric. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, okay. 
Uh, I agree with everything that everyone has said. Um, is we evaluate this and make determinations. I just uh, feel it's impro appropriate to notify the residents that uh, there'll be a lot of changes, possibly to city services, events, and so forth as uh, we move into this crisis. That's good all point. I have. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Wilson. Well, I share some of the views that have been expressed up to this point, and obviously we already know that uh, in by experience that the state considers their money, our money, their money, and that we've already suffered in the past years the fact that they've not given us everything that we should be entitled to. So I really do think we got to look, look real close this year at our budget. I feel very sorry and, and uh, concerned about the hotels, the motels in our area. I think they're going to be very uh, hit bad, and I just wish and hope that we take into account their situation when we come about looking forward to our incomes and our expenditures out of that hotel motel tax. Okay. Um, any closing comments from anyone on the council? <clears throat> Do we have anything from the public? Hearing uh, motion, motion to go out of close um, session. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. This is this is have a, Alder, uh, this is uh, the city attorney. Was your motion to go out of closed session or a public hearing? No, public hearing was uh, the correction. I think I started <laughs> Thank to think you. Thank you, Brooke. How to have it? I just Thank you. Second agrees to it. All right. <clears throat> motion and a second. Roll we'll call, please. Alderman Krishal? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Devere? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Motion carries. We're back into our regular meeting then uh, at the Portion of the meeting that we reserve for citizens' comments. Did we have anyone sign up this evening? Okay, then I don't need to go through that script probably, or should I? There were no emails submitted as of seven. Okay. And there's apparently no one on the phone that is waiting to talk. Okay, so we've had no emails ahead of time. And no one is speaking up at this point, or did I hear someone? Somebody. Okay, then we'll go past citizens' comments because there aren't any and move into official and staff comments, <clears throat> uh, beginning with the mayor. Uh, just a, a personal note to begin with. Most of you probably know already that um, uh, late last month I had a medical emergency and had to have uh, emergency um, surgery at Central DuPage Hospital, and I spent a lovely week there, and I'm back home now, and I'm recuperating, and I'm feeling much better. So I just want to let you know that um, hopefully I'm past that uh, awful milestone and on my way to good health again. And I certainly <clears> appreciate all the kind words and uh, emails and the notes that I got um, of encouragement and support uh, from everyone. So um, I'm on my way back. I'm not 100% yet, but I swear I'm going to get there. Maybe it takes a crisis to bring us back. Um, so again, I appreciate all the support. A few other things that I think are really important to pass along this evening before we move on to the meeting. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the city is taking this COVID-19 pandemic very seriously. I want everyone to know that. We continue to provide the essential services with many employees working remotely, and we continue to practice social distancing and following the CDC guidelines. So again, we're very seriously trying to do everything we can to minimize the impact. And a reminder that if you see our employees working around town, it's okay to wave or say hi, but please maintain that minimum six foot distance if you need to speak with them. That's for not only your safety, it's for their safety. So if you wanna walk up to a squad car and congratulate or thank a, a policeman for being on duty, make sure they see you coming and make sure you say your distance uh, for everyone's safety. That would be very much appreciated. <clears throat> We continue uh, to update the uh, well page for the COVID-19 information. Um, I encourage everyone to adhere to the governor's executive orders to stay at home and not congregate. 
This is going to be incredibly important to limit the access of this virus. Also, follow the CDC guidelines for your safety and the safety of everyone else. <clears throat> the city staff is taking prudent steps to address the economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, as the alderman alluded to earlier, they are probably going to be substantial. We are revising, staff is working on revising revenue forecasts and delaying large capital projects and other expenditures. Those expenditures can be reevaluated re at a later time once the fiscal impacts are better understood. So that's another aspect of what we do that you don't see much happening because it's quiet at City Hall, but there's certainly a lot going on indoors as we try to figure out how we're going to deal with what's coming when what's coming is not really very clear at this point. We just know that it's going to be a difficult time. <clears throat> And finally, there will be a special council meeting next Monday night, April 13th at 7 p.m. We want everyone to know that. It will again be a teleconference meeting and will include a closed session. Um, so that's all the comments I have for this evening. We'll move on to the other elected officials. Clerk? Nothing, thank you. <clears throat> Treasurer? Hey, uh, Mayor, are we gonna make a call on the bike rodeo? Um, at some point, yes, we will have to. <clears throat> I think we're not pressed at this moment to make it, but yes. Well, and, 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 and what goes along with that is solicitation and purchasing of bicycles. And so it's just not even a matter of just the scheduling the event. It's a matter of, of, of months worth of earlier prep work. Good point. I'm glad you brought, brought that up and put it on my radar screen. We will look at it immediately and see what we need to do. That's right. The commission hasn't been able to meet. Right. Which makes it difficult. Right. The commission has not been meeting, obviously. So, yeah, we're going to have to grab that one by the horns and see what, see what decision has to be made. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, because the last meeting they did have, there, they we I guess we approved, the council approved the minutes, which included solicitation of the uh, of the items to right. Uh, so, okay, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, Alderman, I'll ask you individually again if you have comments, beginning with Alderman Ashauer. Uh, just that it's good to hear your voice. I'm glad that you came out of the hospital better than you went in and glad you're recovering. <laughs> thank you. I, I feel the same way. <laughs> Alderman Barry? Welcome back, Mayor. We're glad you're here. Um, and secondly, um, I just want to remind again everybody that uh, if they haven't filled out their census for 2020, please do so. Uh, I had a report from Natalia today that um, so far the numbers that have come in from Warrenville are very good. 50% have uh, completed their census. So that's excellent. Let's see if we can do 100%. So thank you everyone for completing those. Great. We did ours last month, so we're in that 50%. Alderman Bevere? Uh, glad to see you're back, and uh, let me know when you're going to get on your bicycle. I'll come <laughs> join you. I can't wait. <laughs> Alderman Davalos? Yes, it is good to have the mayor back. That's awesome. Um, I have a one question. When I heard you announce a council meeting for next week, I thought you said the 17th, and I looked at my calendar, and it's the 13th, Monday. I think. 13th. So did, did I hear it wrong? The 13th. It's the 13th. Yeah. You are correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Got it. Sure. Okay, Alderman Krishal. Uh, welcome back, Mayor. Um, and uh, just, to, just because it's a stay-at-home order doesn't mean you can't get outside and enjoy some sunshine. I think it does everybody good. So just, uh, just stay apart and don't congregate. I, I appreciate that. And I think those Girl Scout coopies help, are helping me to, to get better. <laughs> so thank you, daughter. I knew they would. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Widener. Yeah, I'd just like to welcome you back, first off, and also, um, I guess, give ourselves a pat on the back for the uh, strategic plan actions that we've taken in the past. We certainly see um, the sidewalks and trails being heavily used, and uh, I guess most people are respecting their recommended the recommended uh, social distancing. Uh, but uh, the the great system of trails we have is is uh, being evidenced and being used by a lot of people right now. And 
Uh, most particularly, you see really see the advantage in the ten foot wide trails. Thank you. Well put. I, I couldn't agree more. When we go out for our walks, we used to be alone, and now it's like uh, depending on when you go out, it can be quite crowded. But I would echo what you said that most people seem very respectful and seem to really understand the necessity to keep their distance. Um, smile and say hello, but just do it from a distance. So, good point. Thank you, Alderman Wilson. Well, the same thing. Welcome back, Mayor. I, I had something similar to what you had, but a lot easier from my standpoint. So welcome back. I, I'm not sure about that comment one of them made about you being better than you were before. I'll just <laughs> take that under consideration. <laughs> That's prudent on your part. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, city administrator. Uh, I will note one thing. The uh, staff posted on Facebook this evening that we're accepting community donations for face masks. Uh, they can be dropped off in the lower level vestibule on Manning Avenue during work hours, uh, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Uh, they will, of course, be then distributed after they make sure they're sanitized, distributed to our police, uh, public works employees. And just a note, we included fire in there as a courtesy, but I haven't remembered to notify them yet. So in case anyone hears before the end of this meeting, I'll be contacting the fire chief to let them know um, if they can accept or not. But um, it, it, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things around the community making masks for people on a volunteer basis and some of our employees would uh, be able to use those that doesn't replace the ppe official masks that we have for some for public works and police uh, for when they need to have close contact or be in certain situations but it does follow the new federal cdc guidelines and what the, the president was asking for everyone to do now is to wear masks to protect everyone else when they're interacting so um, that's what we're looking for. You may see that on our Facebook page as of tonight. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, City Attorney. Um, just to say welcome back, Mayor. I'm glad you're on the mend. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda for this evening. <laughs> Alderman Widener, would you like to make that motion? <clears throat> Certainly. Move to approve the agenda for the April 6, 2020 City Council regular meeting. Alderman Wilson seconds. Thank you. Motion and a second. Um, we need a roll call again. Oh, we're yes. doing everything oh, roll call, right. remember. Right, okay. Uh, hold on just a second then. Okay. Okay. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Krishal? Aye. Thank you. Um, that was unanimous. So the agenda is approved this evening. We have three sets of minutes that need to be approved also. Alderman Widener? I uh, move to approve the minutes of the March 14, 2020 City Council Budget Workshop and to approve the minutes of the March 16th, 2020 City Council Special Meeting, and to approve the minutes of the March 23rd, 2020 City Council Special Meeting. Second by Alderman Wilson. Okay, and I will go through the list again to see if there are any comments on those minutes. Just say yes or no. Alderman Ashour? No comment. Alderman Berry? No comment. Alderman Bevere? No comment. Alderman Davalos? No comment. Alderman Krishal? Uh, just one comment on the uh, minutes from the budget workshop on the roll call. Um, Mike Kaufman's name was listed, but not mine, so I just wanted to make note of that. <laughs> Cut and paste. Just that. Thank you. Oops. Yep. Thank you. Well, don't feel too bad. I was mayor five years, and I still got called mayor. We'll correct that. Thank, Thank you. you. And that's that's it. Okay, Alderman Widener. Uh, no comment. And Alderman Wilson. No comment. Okay, we have the roll call, please. <clears throat> Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Krishal. 
Aye. Alderman Devere? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Thank you, Emily. I will read the consent agenda for this evening now. Item <coughs> 6A, accept staff recommendation and pass resolution R2020-17, approving a contract with Engineering Enterprises Incorporated for the Central One Basin Infiltration and Inflow Investigation in an amount of, <coughs> excuse me, $53,592 and authorizing the city administrator to execute the proposal. B, accept Senior Civil Engineer Hawking's recommendation and pass resolution R2020-18, waiving the two-year maintenance period requirement associated with Compass School and releasing the security cash bond. C, accept <clears throat> staff recommendation and pass resolution R2020-19, approving severance agreements with Marcia Phelps and Michelle Dykstra. D, accept Mayor Bremel's recommendation and extend the duration of the March 16, 2020 declaration of emergency until the adjournment of the next regular, special, or emergency meeting of the City Council. E, accept City Clerk Larson's recommendation and appoint Dawn Graffiti as Deputy City Clerk. F, receive and file report of invoices paid up to April 1, 2020 in the amount of $57,746.78. G, authorize expenditures for invoices due on or before April 20, 2020 in the amount of $237,313.91. I move to approve the agenda as presented by Mayor David Brummel. Second by Alderman Wilson. Okay, now do we need to do that again? Didn't we approve the agenda already earlier? Okay, okay, very good. Roke, thank you. Roll call, please. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Krishal. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Barry. Aye. Alderman Vivier. Aye. Very good. The agenda, consent agenda is approved as presented. We'll move into the regular agenda portion of the meeting. We have several items. Sadly, our, our process on the phone is rather cumbersome, but we'll follow it to give everyone a chance uh, if they have something to say or a question to ask. So what I would ask is that someone make the motion and second, and then I will go through the alderman again to make sure that uh, all the people that have something to say will have that opportunity, and then we'll take a vote after that. Okay, so we'll uh, take item 7A. Would someone like to make that motion? Sure, Alderman Widener, I move to um, offer the first reading of the ordinance 02020-17, adopting the City of Warrenville fiscal year 2021 budget. Second. Okay, Alderman, Alderman, Wilson. Wilson. Alderman Wilson, and we had pretty much extensive comments on this already at the beginning of the meeting, but you're welcome to make additional comments if you feel that's appropriate at this time. Alderman Ashower, do you have anything to add? It's, it is really hard to vote on this without the information that is coming in, I guess. I, they, uh, we, we're getting mixed messages. We're voting on some of the following things in the agenda are, are considering buying non-essential property when we're cutting the uh, road budget by over a third. That, those things have, they're not, uh, they, they don't fit together. How so? How do we go ahead with the first reading of a budget that is that askew? Okay, Alderman Barry. The um, um, you know, my concern is also has the uh, the uh, the road program. So I'm not quite sure um, whether to speak on it here or to speak on it when we get to that item. So um, I think I'll just uh, I'll go along with the first reading 
uh, the motion for the first reading, but I do have some questions about the road program. Thank you. Okay, very good. Alderman Bevere? Yeah, just uh, as long as the gas station's on this, I won't be voting in favor of it, and uh, I've done this for the last two years, and that's my only comment. Okay, thank you. Alderman Davalos? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine to vote yes on this first reading because of what of the question I asked previously that we would be getting these numbers before the final vote and that we always have the opportunity to do budget amendments through the year. So I, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Alderman Crishel? Agreed with Alderman Davalos. I think, um, you know, first reading to get get it through to discuss other items on this agenda. So I'm I'm good with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alderman Widener. I I agree with uh, Alderman Davalos. I'll be voting in favor of this. And the only thing I have in common re relating to the property that's in this budget is that it actually diversifies our holdings. In some ways, land may be. Uh, more value holding land may be more valuable than holding cash. Who knows? Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Wilson. <clears throat> uh, no, I'm in favor of this first offering of the reading. Okay, thank you. Could I have a roll call then, please? Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Kreshel. Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Nay. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Let's move on to item 7B. Would someone make that motion, please? <clears throat> Alderman Berry? I'd um, like to make a motion to accept staff recommendation and waive second reading and pass ordinance 02020-18 authorizing the temporary suspension of city code section 7-4C-6, 7-4C-8, 7-4C-10, and 7-4C-11 regarding delinquent water and sewer accounts through June 30, 2020. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, does anyone want to take a couple of moments and explain the significance to the citizens of this action? I can do that. Okay. Um, City, Administra City Administrator Coakley. Thank you. Uh, given everything that's going on, people, many people in town are not going to be working right now because their business, their restaurant, they work at, whatever it is, is, is not open and operating, or it may be, but on a diminished level. Uh, other people may be furloughed from work. Uh, people, we anticipate there will be more people having difficulties, at least in the short term, paying their water bills, their sewer bills. So. Staff took administrative action when the first set of bills came up and came due uh, this month to not go out and do the shutoffs we normally would do, uh, including, I guess, the March bills that came due. Uh, we're re requesting the council, though, also temporarily waive the city code provision that requires or that levies or impl uh, implements fines and uh, late fees for late payments. This would only be during this whole economic downturn due to the pandemic. Uh, once that situation is over, we would return to normal. But it's in the code, so the council really should take that action to allow us to not penalize people with a charge. So this is really for our citizens? Correct. That are struggling. Water customers, sewer customers, are citizens, yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, I'll go through the alderman then and uh, see if we have comments. Alderman Ashauer? No comment. Okay. Alderman Berry? Um, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Very good. Alderman Bevere? No comment. Alderman Davalos? Yeah, I'm in favor of it also, but is this just the delinquent fees or are we actually forgiving the whole water and sewer payments totally? Administrator Coakley? Only the late fees. The, the amounts would still be due, but we wouldn't we wouldn't charge them extra for being delinquent and paying. Thank at you. This time. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Crucial? 
Uh, no comment. Alderman Widener? No comment. Alderman Wilson? No comment. Okay, thank you. Um, roll call, please. <clears throat> Alderman Ashauer? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Krishal? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. We're on to item 7C. Would someone make that motion, please? Alderman Davalos. Accept staff recommendation and pass resolution R2020-20, approving change order number one to the 2020 road program contract with Geneva Construction. Alderman Wilson seconds. Okay, motion and a second. Um, discussion, Alderman Ashauer. No, I think it's prudent. Okay. Alderman Berry? Um, I do have a question. Um, I didn't quite understand um, why we were doing the road program at all. Um, I, um, under, we're still spending a million dollars. I don't know if that's necessary. I know it was 1.6 million, but now it's still a million dollars. Um, and I know it says that there cannot, uh, it's not the money is not to exceed a certain dollar amount, but um, what if there are change orders during the uh, uh, repaving, or you know what happens with there's some issues with the sewers or putting in sidewalks, gutters, you know curbs? Um, uh, what do we do about change orders? Okay, good question, uh, City Administrator Coakley. Uh, I'll answer the first one, and I'm going to defer to our Deputy Public Works Director on the second question regarding change orders. First of all, uh, Phil Kokler, our Deputy Public Works Director, Finance Director Galstrand, and I have spent a lot of time talking about this over the last, I think it was a week and a half. Uh, the contracts were, as you may remember, the bids were approved by the City Council. The contracts are sitting at my desk waiting for signature. At that point, we got together to try to figure out whether we should do any of them, all of them, some of them, none of them for the roads this year, uh, came up with this proposal after a lot of thinking through. Uh, I will tell you that our, on behalf of our staff, we could go along with either recommendation that we have made to scale back. We think that is the most, uh, the least, at least a prudent effort to do. Uh, it's a good move to save some cash because we're in a downturn and we don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, the advice that Finance Director Dahlstrand and I have gotten from experts uh, on a national level, even locally, is when there's an economic downturn like this and you're in a fiscal probably crisis that we don't know how far along we are or where it ends or where it's going, to conserve cash when you can, delay big projects that can be delayed. We looked at this year's projects and thought this is a good way to do some of the work to avoid snowballing the projects for future years. They'll all have to get done at some point, uh, yet conserve a large amount of cash so that we don't deplete the CMRP fund or have to dig into the general fund. And in addition, should there be a crisis bigger than what we're anticipating, I'll qualify, um, the CMRP fund is a source of money that the council could use as extra contingency money, so we don't want to spend that. Uh, again, we could go with the recommendation if the council wishes to cancel the entire road program, we have made Geneva Construction aware that that might be one of the alternatives that comes out of tonight's meeting. That's, again, not our recommendation, but we can certainly support that if that's what the council wants to do. I'll let Phil answer the question about change orders during the contract. Uh, we generally, with this type of project where we're just resurfacing, we're replacing curb and gutter and sidewalk, uh, Jamie Clark and our uh, consulting engineer have gone out over the winter time and actually marked out and have a pretty well-defined um, set of quantities for each pay item. And we, at least on the resurfacing type projects, we don't generally have change orders over. We're usually a little bit under in terms of uh, in terms of our budget. Uh, if there was okay. a, if there was a change order, the 
contractor would have to ask for that before we would, and we'd have to be, approve them going ahead with it before they do the work. Okay, and uh, City Administrator Kofi again. I don't know if there's any questions about that. I want to make one wrap-up point. Uh, I want to make sure everybody understands the the proposed uh, reduced road program, Maple Hill, uh, Stafford Place, the concrete work, and Ray Street were determined between the staff, especially public work staff, my involvement, and Geneva Construction. They have nothing to do, we got absolutely zero input from elected officials when we scaled that back. After we decided that those are the recommendations, I realized those are streets that two of our aldermen happen to live on, but they had absolutely zero input. I wanna make sure that's clear from the start. Uh, this has nothing to do with political anything. It's the way that the, the project efficiency would work best if the council decides to approve that. Okay, any follow-up, Alderman Berry? Well, I still do have an issue with this, um, but as long as this has been looked at by several different people, that is fine. Um, the um, um, work orders that would have to be, um, change orders, I should say, that have, would have to be coming forward if necessary, um, who votes to approve those change orders? Would the city council have to vote on that? City of Bill. Bill Kukler, please. I think, and I'd have to go back and look at the, res the original resolution that approved the contract. Um, it, I know the city administrator, I believe the city administrator is authorized to sign off on change orders up to a certain uh, percentage of the contract. I don't, I typically in our resolutions, I'm not sure if that was the case in this one or not. Um, so if, if not, then we'd have to bring any change order back to the council. Otherwise, John would have the authority to sign off on a, um, a change order to a certain percentage of the contract. And typically it's like 5%, but I don't know what, I don't recall off top head what the uh, resolution for this approval was. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Alderman, Alderman Wilson Bittier. would like to make a comment. I'll get to you, Alderman. I'm going through the list. Thank you. Okay. Alderman, Alderman Bevere. Yeah, I have one question. Uh, we, if we reduce the road program, we got an engineering firm we're paying to oversee the project. Is his, is he going to be reduced too? Or you know, if he ain't uh, working as uh, if the project's been cut down, I wouldn't think he'd be making the same amount of money. All right, good question. City Administrator Coakley. Yes, good question. Uh, the engineering contract is based on the hours and actual labor work, so it would automatically be reduced because the amount of work is reduced. So correct, it would be reduced too. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Diavolos? Um, Yes, my thought on this is I think I'm in favor of doing the proposed um, road program saving the 600,000 or whatever because we've been talking the last several weeks and maybe a month or so about um that we have lean years coming up that these are going to be challenging years well i'm sure we will figure it out but they will be challenging years for all the reasons that we've talked about i hate to just dump a whole road program into those years we already have to figure out I mean, we, we made some tough decisions for the 2021 budget, but I, I often think about what are we going to do on 2022 if, if we need to come up with some more money. So I guess I'm not in favor of, of offloading the whole road program, even onto the next two or three years. Or I suppose you could do it longer, but at some point it's going to be, uh, you know, more, more rocks in the pack. Uh, in the backpack. So I guess I would say I, I, I'm in favor of, of, of the proposal of just um, cutting back partially on this road program. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Alderman Kershaw. Uh, thank you. So um, the three remaining, um, I guess it's four, right? Um, places to be on left on the road program here for the the amount of the one million dollars um if if we were to remove all of those altogether that one and a half million or 1.6 that would not be removed from which fund in the budget the 
Yeah. Well, city industry Coco. Okay, all of these are budgeted in the CMRP fund, uh, fund O2. All the money is allocated in there and would be spent from there. It doesn't come from any other fund. Right, okay. I just wanted to clarify to make sure. Um, and um, as far as any contractual pricing, so obviously we don't know what would happen a year from now as far as labor costs, materials costs, anything like that, right? Like we wouldn't, we couldn't just, we would remove these out of the contract. We're not going to postpone them. They would actually have to go back to rebid whenever we do the work. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, okay. Qualifications from city administrator Coakley. Yes, is um, what I said is correct about the revenues, except we do make a transfer in from the hotel tax fund, I believe. To uh, I need to have Kevin here shaking or nodding his head. Uh, we do not. Never mind. Those funds are all self-contained. I, I withdraw my qualification. Okay. And the answer to your question is, is still the same, that if if we don't do these contracts, there's no price guarantee going into the future. We have to renegotiate. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. my only comment, I mean, I, it's – it's uh, you're, definitely we need to look at this, and, we, and yeah, I think it's a, it's a good idea to tighten it up a little bit. So I'm, I'm in agreement with this. My, my only question would be is if we want to if we want to move ahead with removing all of the road program, and I think that's that's where I'm kind of torn at right now. Okay. So I'd offer any other any other comments on that particular piece. Okay. Alderman Weiner. Yes. Yeah. I, um, Kevin Dahlstrand. Alderman. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry, I'd like to cl cl clarify. There is some money that comes into <coughs> this fund. Excuse me. There is somebody that comes into to this fund from the hotel motel tax fund. Okay. Three hundred thousand dollars comes into the CMRP from the hotel tax fund. Okay, and that would be used for the road program. Correct. Well, it supports the whole fund, but in theory, yes, part of that okay. would support the road program. That's a transfer in. I was looking at revenues. Thank you. Okay. Does that help, Alderman Crishel? Yeah, it does. I mean, but obviously that's one of the re revenue streams that we're kind of concerned about, right? So right. Exactly. if we're not refilling that fund, and so that was my concern. Okay. Alderman Widener. Uh, I just have, uh, I guess, a question uh, regarding putting a moratorium on this expenditure for 30 days and coming back and revisiting it, what uh, would be the ramifications of doing something like that? Um, the landscape picture might uh, clear up more than more than uh, the view that we have right now. Okay. Um, City Administrator Thank Coakley? Uh, Thank you. We have talked about different types of delays. Uh, I don't believe 30 days would do us any good because most of the revenues, the local remittances, we would only have some idea uh, 30 days from now what that is doing to us. Uh, I, I don't believe we'll have enough of an indication because we won't have received the reduced amount of money to be able to project forward on, on what's happening. And even just with the uh, uh, road fund, uh, with the CMRP funds, uh, it certainly won't be enough time to know what's going on in the general fund and the rest of the budget because the state, as you were discussing or mentioned earlier, is delaying their remittances. There are already several months. Sales tax already takes three months to receive. If you're looking at how to compare with the general fund, now it's probably going to be at least, I would assume, five months uh, to receive a reduced amount. So it will be... 90 to 120 days, really about six months from now, till we have a very clear idea what has happened and the impacts to our revenues up until that point and whether or not we've begun to come out of it or are coming out of it. Okay, is that helpful? Okay, yes, thank you. And finally, Alderman Wilson, thank you for your patience. Well, very patient. Uh, I just have a comment, too. I just think it's approvable. Uh, I like the way they've looked at this. They've taken a look at a good 
reduction in the total expenditures for the road program. A couple of reasons. I don't think that we should be in a position to think about postponing the entire project for next year or sometime in the future. Uh, it's in the budget. We will be able to make it, I think. The other aspect would be also if we decided to cancel the entire project, I'm sure that the uh, Geneva construction would in all likelihood want to reevaluate their bids on the projects as it proceeds. So we don't know what the uh, adjusted figures might be, if any change at all. So I, I think it's a good decision to make is to eliminate those projects that we've eliminated and go forward with the construction program uh, as results. So I'm in favor of just approving the change order to the road program. Thank you. Very good, thank you. I think we're then ready for a roll call. Uh, this is Alderman Barry. I have one additional oh, question, please. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Um, it's for um, Finance uh, Director Dahlstrand. Uh, can you give me the, um, I don't have my uh, budget book in front of me at the moment. I apologize. Uh, can you give me the number of the, uh, the amount that would be transferred from the hotel tax fund into the CMRP? Yes, it's three hundred thousand uh, dollars that comes from the hotel tax fund into the CMRP. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other additional comments? Okay, then we'll go to the roll call. Alderman Barry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Kreschel? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Alderman Vivier? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. We're on to item 7D. May I have a motion, please? Alderman Davalos, accept the city attorney's recommendation and pass resolution R2020-21 adopting a supplemental rule concerning public comments during virtual meetings. Second, second. Alderman Widener. Okay, motion and a second. Discussion or questions beginning with Alderman Ashauer. I support it. Very good, thank you. Alderman Berry? Yes, I'm in support, thank you. Okay, Alderman Bevere. Yeah, no questions. Thank you, Alderman Davalos. I support it. Alderman Krishel. No comment. Alderman Widener. I support it. And Alderman Wilson. Support it. Thank you. Roll call, please. Alderman Krishel. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Thank you. Uh, motion carries. We're on to item 7E. May I have a motion, please? Alderman Widener, I move to accept staff recommendation and approve the emergency responder COVID-19 leave policy effective April 1st, 2020, December or through December 31st, 2020, and authorize the city administrator to negotiate similar benefits for employees covered under a collective bargaining agreement. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. We'll move on then to discussion again. We'll go through the lists, beginning with Alderman Ashour. Um, I just want to point out, I, I support this, but as long as we're talking about the budget and the entire year. Uh, you, you, you faded out, Alderman. We can't hear you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. How about, can you hear me? No. Yeah. No, it's your real light. <laughs> I don't know where I, can you hear me now? <laughs> yep. We got you now. Yeah. Um, my concern is that I want to make sure everybody's aware that the budget, as long as we're talking about it, 
This includes a possible additional two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So I just I support it, but it is worth note, being noteworthy. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Berry. I think that um, I'm in favor of this. Um, other than that, no comment. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Bevere. No comment. Alderman Davalos. No comment. Alderman Crishaw. No comment. Alderman Widener. No comment. And Alderman Wilson. No comment. Thank you. Roll call, please. Alderman Ashauer. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Barry. Aye. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Alderman Crishaw. Aye. Thank you, Emily. We'll go on to item. 7F, then may I have the motion, please? Uh, Alderman Berry, um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to take from the table the motion made on March 23, 2020, and direct staff to remove the Sitco gas station property purchase and clean up costs from the proposed FY 2021 budget. Alderman Davila, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Before we have discussion, I'll, um, City Administrator Coakley has a memo for us. I hope you all have copies of that, of the recommended uh, course of action for this evening, City Administrator. Thank you. Uh, we discovered, uh, I was alerted to a uh, little confusion with this item. Uh, our staff did go back and check the recording of the special meeting, and we did have the motion correct, both the motion to table to tonight and the motion was originally made and seconded. Uh, the one correction, though, is that the purchase of the gas of Sitco gas station was not yet put into the fiscal year 21 proposed budget. In fact, Ron Menser's memo that's included in the pack up packet does recommend that, but at this point in time, it had not yet been put in the budget. So the motion to remove it is a little bit confusing. Now, the cleanup costs are included in the fiscal 21 proposed budget. The purchase was as you recall, originally in the fiscal 20 budget, the assumption was everything was working towards the city purchasing that late in calendar 19 or fiscal 20 or in the last few months. But as you recall, the council voted and directed staff to renegotiate that contract and that has been accepted. So the new closing date or due diligence period, I should say, extends into early June. So nothing will be happening on that during fiscal 20. I just want to clarify that confusion. Now, the second point on the memo, and I don't know how the council is going to vote on this yet, but if the council does not approve the motion to remove all of those expenses from next year's proposed budget, then I would ask uh, the motion is written out there to direct staff to include the purchase in the fiscal 21 budget in accordance with what Ron Menser's, our Community Development uh, Director Menser's April 1st memo in your packet includes, including the Exhibit A, which lays out how many, what expenditures would be included for which year. This recommendation is only to include it in the budget. You are not voting to approve anything, any of the expenses, the purchase, or any of the uh, related expenses tonight. Thank you. Okay, so what we have then is we have a motion on the table. The recommendation is to vote against that motion and uh, replace that with a new motion, uh, which is can be found at the bottom of the memo on page one, yes? One correction, there's no recommendation. Well, the recommendation from staff is to keep it in the budget. Yes, thank you. Okay, it does say recommended there. Okay. And I, I, I concur. So, uh, again, we'll go through the, all the aldermen to give them an opportunity to speak on the issue, beginning with Alderman Ashour. The, uh, you guys pretty much know how I feel about it. I don't support the purchase. Okay. Alderman Berry? Well, um, I do support the purchase, and therefore I will be uh, voting nay um, on this recommendation, and I will probably vote 
yay on the second motion if the first one passes. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Bevere. Uh, no comment. Okay, Alderman Davalos. Um, yeah, I, I need a, 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 some information here. So basically, um, we are keeping the purchase in 221. And uh, well, wait a minute. Let me, let me let me rephrase this. Right now in the budget is I think I'm remembering three hundred forty thousand dollars to do was was in the budget to deal with the Sitco gas station, and now we're kind of saying um, for for two for two twenty one. What's the final number? If we just want the purchase, it's eighty-eight thousand dollars, right? Eighty-nine thousand dollars. So actually, we're saving money in a way because of how we're redistributing these costs. We're saving money in in twenty twenty-one. Uh, Community Development and Economic Development Director Menser, could you help us out here, please? Sure. So the fiscal year twenty twenty budget included. $340,000 for purchase related costs for the property. That's uh, what we had anticipated due diligence, uh, consulting legal, and actual when we adopted the budget, potential costs associated with payment to the property owner. Uh, under the terms of the contract, the purchase price is $30,000. We would be responsible for certain property taxes that are, that are unpaid on the property. Um, and they, they're, they're a couple of years there, so they can add up. I think it's close to fifty or fifty-five thousand dollars to what we estimated those costs are. So there's eighty-eight thousand dollars worth of actual purchase costs that will not happen this fiscal year, and that we are recommending be carried over, rebudgeted into next fiscal year. Thus far, this fiscal year, we have incurred approximately $75,000 in consulting legal site investigation related costs that are part, part of what we needed to spend in order to understand the uh, current conditions of the property and estimate what the total cost to remediate would be. So to answer your question directly and succinctly, there was $340,000 in this year's budget. Um, this fiscal year's budget for purchase related costs, we will incur $75,000 of those costs this year, and then 88,000 of the purchase related costs would be rebudgeted into next year. And if you just bear with me a little bit, for next year's budget, um, we already had proposed $425,000 in the draft budget that was distributed earlier this spring or late winter. Um, that you, you, know, you had the first reading on and is noted in my memo as part of the agenda backup for this material, for this particular item. Um, because of the delay in due diligence and when we expect to potentially close on the property, uh, we are now anticipating that the actual cost that the city would incur for cleanup related items in fiscal year 2021 would be reduced from the currently proposed budget number of $425,000 down to $175,000. So, okay, next, so fiscal year, okay. next, next fiscal year budget, if the second motion on Administrator Copley's memo is ultimately approved by the City Council, there'll be approximately $250,000 in next year's budget. Um, uh, allocated to both the purchase and uh, various cleanup activities on the property. Okay, so exactly what you're saying in um, Exhibit A. That's correct. Okay, okay. And and there'll be some choice on this heavy metal business, uh, whether we want to do 222 or, I'm sorry, 2022 or 2023. That's just kind of, you're just talking about the two hundred fifty thousand. That's a combination of the eighty-eight and the um, boom, boom, boom. The one seventy-five. Right? Yep. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. My last question. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Now, if we're, I want to know what I'm saying. If I'm voting no, I, I'm just saying. I mean, voting no is. Then we have to make another motion to kind of vote on what Exhibit A is saying. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
Alderman Crishel. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, um, I'm in favor of of the the purchase and and um, development of that property. Um, I guess my only question is if you know, can you kick the can down the road, so to speak? Like if you if you you know don't approve this, and I mean, what happens then? Right, that's my question. Okay, Ron, would you like to address we, that? Yep. Sure. You know, there's there's no uh, definitive answer. I can't I can't tell you for sure what's going to happen next. I can tell you what I think will happen, and primarily what will happen is nothing. You know, the property is going to um, remain in generally its current condition. Will continue to um, degrade. I really question whether or not the current property owners will take any steps to do any type of maintenance on the property. Um, the existing tanks on the property will remain until the Office of State Fire Marshal uh, goes to court and the court rules and mandates that whoever's the owner of the property at that time, which uh, according to the State Fire Marshal's office could be uh, up to three years from now, would have to remove the tanks. Um, the property taxes will continue to be delinquent on it and will um Back taxes will continue to accumulate along with additional penalties. Um, um, I would assume that if uh, the current contract does, kind of falls apart, that the city will um, that would be my recommendation and plan that we would reinitiate uh, property maintenance code violation actions to try to get some um, positive movement in the maintenance of the property that hasn't worked in the past. We've already leaned twenty thousand dollars of fines against the property. Uh, and then finally, there's I, I can share with you that uh, uh, I learned late last week that the owner of the property um, was uh, party to litigation in uh, Cook County, uh, and there was a judgment uh, that was awarded to the uh, person that brought that suit. And now there's a judgment that's been levied against all of the properties that person owns. Um, and now it hasn't yet been recorded against this property, which is important because the city's purchase agreement was re the revised purchase agreement was recorded. So any liens from a judgment um, that would be recorded against the property would get in line behind um, our purchase agreement. We're only proposing to pay $30,000 for the property and the judgment is for $100,000 so they would only get the proceeds from the sale. If we walked away from the current contract and uh, the property was then put under contract uh, in the future, that $100,000 lien would have to be satisfied before the property could be sold, you know, especially if it was going to be sold for less than, than the uh, well, whoever would buy it, if they bought it for less than the hundred thousand dollar lien, they would buy it for less. Plus, they would inherit the responsibility of taking uh, care of paying off the lien. So just the, the long and short of all that is that things aren't going to get any simpler, and I don't see a path by which uh, the private sector will find a way to do anything positive on that property. So, uh, if we don't move forward. The likelihood of it kind of staying as is and continuing to degrade is is high in my um, from my perspective. Thank you, Ryan. Additional follow up, Alderman Kershaw. Um, yeah, thank you. That's very helpful. Um, I think uh, if if the idea was you know to support this moving forward at at some point, it makes it doesn't make sense to you know revisit it later. To continue moving forward makes more sense now if you explained it. Um, my only other concern is, you know, we're, we're we're tightening up the budget here. We just talked about remove, reducing a road program. Um, um, you know, I, I guess if I, if we're comfortable with with this um, item in the budget, and especially from the 425 to the 175 for FY 2021, um, then yeah, I think I would be against removing this um, as it stands. So, thank you. Okay, Alderman Widener. 
Um, I'm sure everybody knows how I feel on this property. I think we're getting it at a good price uh, within the strategic plan. The citizens have shown extremely strong support for acquisition of this um, dilapidated or site that has uh, is not only an eyesore but has an uh, environmental condition to it uh, that we need to clean up. And if we're repairing certain roads and they're a priority, I think cleaning a contaminated site next to a, a river that's already uh, been restored and uh, to leave an area as open space, trails, and to improve an area's commercial viability could uh, be seen as a, as a high priority here. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. And finally, Alderman Wilson. Yes, I'm uh, in favor, very much in favor, of keeping this project into our budget the way we originally uh, talked about. We've put a lot of time and effort into this uh, election here to uh, do something with that property down there. And if we were to vote here to remove the funds from the budget, then we're, we're, at, a, we're at a dead end. Uh, we have no place to go. We will be out of the opportunities that they did arise or whatever. So my uh, opportunity or my hope is the fact that I will vote against removing this from the funds and in the rather continue it in the funds and put it in the budget and keep it in the budget. So it gives us an opportunity to do something with that property that I think the uh, director has already indicated. We pretty much know no one else is going to touch it with the old proverbial 10-foot pole. So I'm very much against removing it from the budget forward to the vote. Okay, thank you. A reminder, we have uh, item 7F, we have a motion on the table. The recommendation is to vote against that motion. And if that is successful, then uh, someone would make a new motion um, as uh, lined out in uh, the, at the bottom of uh, the memo from City Administrator Coakley. So the vote this on uh, Alderman, 7 I'm sorry. This is, Alderman, this is Alderman Barry. I have another comment. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, which I forgot to bring up earlier. Um, Something that reminded me yesterday as I thought about this is that um, this uh, gas station has been involved in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three different bankruptcies. Um, it's interesting what uh, Director Menzer has uh, brought up because that was my issue, the financial stability of the owners themselves. And um, if we lose this because of a bankruptcy also, this is, uh, this is going to be very detrimental uh, to purchasing this in, in the future. Thank you. Okay. All of the devils, can I make one more comment? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, d just again to reiterate, um, w w and this this isn't the, the biggest thing to be voting on, what I'm going to say, but we are in this coming tw 2021 budget saving about $150,000. And $150,000 in this budget with what's going on in the economy and everything else is a lot of money. So we're, we're moving it down the road. I'm not saying it won't be spent in some other year. But for this really critical year that we're going to be hurting, I think, more than any other year, I, I think to save that money is at least somewhat significant. That's okay, all. Thank you. All right. Anyone else with a final comment? All right, then uh, let's have a roll call for item 7F. Alderman Barry. Nay. Alderman Widener. Nay. Alderman Krishal. Nay. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Sorry? I'm sorry, what? Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Alderman Davalos? Nay. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Nay. Okay, the uh, motion is defeated. Uh, would someone like to make the new motion? I'm going to make a motion to direct that. 
Alderman Wilson to direct staff to include the Cisco property purchase expenses to be included in the proposed fiscal year 2021 budget in accordance with community and economic development. Director Mensher's memo dated April 1, 2020, including Exhibit A. Second, Alderman Davalos. Davalos. Alderman Davalos. Alderman Davalos, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call again, please. <clears throat> Alderman Davalos. Oh, wait. Um, I should have discussion. I'll give you an opportunity for final comments, I guess, because it's a new motion. So let's go through the list again, please. Alderman Yeshauer. I uh, just wanted to point out that in the literature we've been forwarded that the, the property owner will always be responsible for the contamination underneath Warrenville Road. If that gets re-excavated or rebuilt and there's contamination that has to be removed, that is the responsibility of the current property owner. So that's okay. a child card. Okay. Alderman Berry? Uh, no comment. I'm in favor okay. of this. Okay, Alderman Bazir. No comment. Alderman Davalos. Yeah, just one quick comment. Um, we're the only ones that can do this property. This is what municipalities do. Um, we have to put together a program and we have to do it. There's layers to it and there's lots of sources of revenue and sources of grants and it's very complicated. But we are the only ones, one, that care enough about it, and two, nobody else is going to do this. This is what, this is what a city does. And ultimately, the TIF dollars will flow in years from now, and this will all balance out. But we just have to have this property before some unknown thing goes on for five, ten years. Um, I get more comments on this issue than any other issue in Ward 3. And so I am so in favor of just get, let's get this property, do what we have to do, and then figure it out over the next several years as we figure out the budget and all that kind of stuff. Well, there are a lot of sources of income for this thing. We're not going to pay all by ourselves $1.2 or 3 or $4 million. There's going to be ways to do this. And, um, and a lot has been proposed in the other memos we've seen tonight. So I am very much in favor of this, and I don't see anybody but the city of Warrenville that can do this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Kershaw. No comment. Alderman Widener. No comment. And Alderman Wilson. No comment. Thank you all. Uh, roll call again. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Alderman Ashauer. Nay. Alderman Crystal. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Nay. Okay, motion carries. We're on then to the last of the number sevens, 7G. Would someone like to make that motion, please? Alderman Berry. No. Oh. Go ahead, Alderman Berry. Um, I'd like to make a motion to direct staff to reevaluate the communications coordinator position uh, during the prep preparation of the FY 2022 budget to determine if the city has sufficient funding available based on short-term projections to cover the compensation and benefit costs associated with the position. Second by Alderman Davalos. Very good, thank you. Discussion? Alderman Ashauer. It wouldn't seem like it would be the time for us to be discussing adding new positions to the budget. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Berry. Um, I agree um, with Alderman uh, Ashauer. Um, yes, this is just not the time for this. I, I, I think this is something that we can look forward to next year. Um, in the FY uh, 2022 budget, but as of right now, I don't think this is going to work, especially if we're going to do the, you know, a portion, part of the road program. Um, I think uh, we need to do that for the citizens also. Thank you. 
Okay, Alderman Bevere. Yeah, are we uh, voting to not go through with this or to go through with it? That's what I'm trying to figure on this question. Yeah, I was just um, reading it again myself. <laughs> Thank you for breaking that up. Assistant City Administrator White. So the, the vote is to postpone the review of the position or consideration of the position until fiscal year 22. Okay, so we're voting not to hire this person, but to reevaluate it next year. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Alderman Davalos? Uh, yeah, I'm in favor of the option one also to, to delay. Um, and just what, one of the big things is, you know, so you pass it for, you pass a position for 2021 and then you have it for 2022 and 2023 and on and on and on. So it's not like a road program where it's one year. It's, it's actually, we are saying that we are ready to commit to year after year after year of funding this budget uh, of this position. So I'm definitely in favor of, of delaying it for now. Okay, thank you, Alderman Crucial. I agree, thank you. Okay, Alderman Widener. Yeah, I, I see the need for this position, but uh, I feel it's necessary to delay and postpone it. Okay, Alderman Wilson. Yes, <clears throat> I see no need to do this uh, for fiscal year 2022. We have a pretty good procedure on an annual budget where we, every year we submit decision packages on a yearly basis for objects that we want to take up at the succeeding year. So I think this is premature to take a vote on now to set this up for uh, fiscal year 2022 and should resign, go back to the way we normally do it. And if this is to be brought up again, it certainly could be brought up by a decision package at a workshop for fiscal year 2022, so I'm against this. Okay, any other discussion? Alderman Ashour, just a question. So, does a nay vote for this take an opportunity to be brought I'm back? Sorry, we lost him. You're going in and out. Start is again. a nay vote for this mean that it's taken off the table for now? Yes. Okay. Just trying to City Administrator trying White. To I'm, May I'm sorry, go ahead. Alderman Davalos. I'm so um, confused. I, I don't, that's not how I was reading it. I was reading that a, that the staff is recommending the option one where we delay, so a, a, an I vote would take it away for this year. Right, the way it's written, it means that for this year, we're not doing it, we're gonna reevaluate it next year to see if it's possible. So, in so a if sense, you agree with that, you vote aye? Yes, okay. correct. Okay. If you agree with putting it off and having it reconsidered at another time, that's what we're essentially doing. Thank city you. Administrator, Assistant City Administrator White. Can I, just one clarifying statement. Um, what Alderman Wilson said is absolutely accurate that we evaluate the budget every year. We would bring this back. It would just be a, essentially, we would be putting this decision package forward again next year for consideration to, as our, our normal process would allow. All we're saying with this motion, because there was a request to bring it forward sooner, is that staff is recommending that we not do that this year in light of everything fiscally going on and we look at it again next year. Right, so if you vote in favor of this motion, you're agreeing with the staff recommendation to defer consideration of the position until that next year at which time there could be discussion again. Everyone clear? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, roll call please. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Kreschel. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Vivere. Aye. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Okay, motion is carried. We have nothing under unfinished business, nothing under new business, no closed session necessary. Um, just uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Before you have that motion, I would like to thank everyone for um, making a somewhat chunky way to do things as smooth as it could possibly be tonight. Um, this will be probably some aspect of our new normal uh, for some period of time at, at least. 
So uh, I, I and the staff certainly appreciate uh, all of your hard work to make it happen smoothly tonight. So if we could have that final motion. I move Alderman Davalos, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. And I'm going to take a voice vote on this and see how enthusiastic it is. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty clear direction. <laughs> Thank you all again. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Bye.